bittersweet. Today we are leaving Uruguay. I'm very sad about that. I have absolutely fallen head over heels for this country. I love it so much. Anyways, but good news is we're heading on to Argentina for the first time. Going to Buenos Aires and so much to explore. In our last episode, we had continued our exploration of Uruguay by renting a car and driving up the coast to Jose Ignacio, where we visited Garcon, drank some wine, ate at two Francis Malman restaurants, and then to finish out our time, we had lunch on the beach at one of the best restaurants in Latin America. Today, we're heading back to Montevideo and heading to the ferry station where we will board a ferry for a two-hour trip to Buenos Aires. So I read online that they give you these little booties to put over your feet. I guess they don't want their boat getting dirty, but it is, <laughs> but it's pretty weird. What do you think? Just, you know, I'm going into surgery soon. <laughs> Once on board the ferry, we head to the first class lounge to settle into our seats. The upgrade really didn't cost very much, and they welcome you with a glass of champagne. We decided to take a quick nap in these great little pods. It wasn't long before we could see Argentina on the horizon, and it was time to get ready to disembark. We well, made it to Buenos Aires! We're doing the boat ride, the ferry. One of those civilized ways you gotta, of... You gotta After a short walk to the hotel to drop off our suitcases, it was time to go and explore the city a little bit. We finished our day at the famous Alvear rooftop bar and wound down with a cocktail and a sunset. Buenos Aires has a decidedly European feel to it. There were many times while walking around, we both remarked that it reminded us of our time spent in Paris. It's an enormous city that still has a strong sense of neighborhood culture. And there are so many parks and green spaces that are filled with people lounging in the sun, playing with their kids or jamming with friends. Overall, it felt very welcoming and alive. People in the park at all times, especially when the weather's warmer. Mother Nature's got a little rainy and cold these last two days, but normally the parks are packed with people like just having picnics. Right, and, and Sundays were insane. And the playgrounds, like the, there's like 20 kids to every plaything. Right. <laughs> playgrounds. It's, it's awesome. really cool. No, it really is. It's really cool just to see the families out, everybody just enjoying, Tons you know, the out, yeah, just enjoying the outdoor spaces and letting the dogs run around and everything. So the city definitely has a very cool vibe to it. If there's one thing you must try when you're in Buenos Aires, that's choripan. This is essentially a chorizo sausage sandwich, and they can be found everywhere in the city, but we heard the ones from Chori were particularly good. More than just a basic choripan, they offer a number of different styles to try. And I gotta say, I'm so glad we dropped by because they were, in fact, delicious. Next up, we had a little bit of time to visit the Recoleta Cemetery, so we took one of the many wonderful taxis to the Recoleta neighborhood to explore one of the world's most extraordinary graveyards. Safe inside this idea in my head. From all the intricate above-ground mausoleums to some crazy stories about the people interred in them, it feels like a small city as you stroll through the alleyways. There are over 6,400 grandiose mausoleums in the cemetery. It was an amazing experience and is a must-see when you come to Buenos Aires. I really wish we had more time to wander around in awe and learn of the fascinating tales and legends of the people laid to rest here.
There is an insane amount of fantastic restaurants in Buenos Aires, and our next couple of videos will be dedicated to all of the culinary diversity that this town offers. But there is one restaurant that stands out and was our favorite during our time spent there, Meshugana. We're having dinner at Meshugana, and I am so excited because it's Israeli and Jewish cuisine, and Jewish cuisine is my favorite cuisine. It is so good. This is also known as the very best Jewish restaurant in Buenos Aires, which has a huge Jewish population. So I think that's saying a lot. And I think it's supposed to be a pretty fun place because isn't the name Meshugana supposed to mean like crazy in Yiddish or something like that? So it's supposed to be a lot of fun. Yep. So looking forward to it. All right, let's go. let's go check it out. Chef Tomas Kalika spent years learning Middle Eastern flavor profiles, and Meshugana is his first restaurant dedicated to exploring his Jewish roots. And if you're still not convinced, every Friday night, Meshugana celebrates Shabbat, and an entire restaurant breaks out in song and dance led by the klezmer band that plays live music. Of course, you will eat at the numerous and excellent steak restaurants when you visit, but do yourself a favor and try this restaurant when you come to town. You will not be disappointed. So many restaurants to choose from. We loved Meshugana so much, we actually went a second time before we left. Right, we are guilty pleasure back at Meshugana for the second time. Uh, absolutely love the food here. The Jewish cuisine, the, I mean everything, the atmosphere, it's such a happy place. I can't wait to get inside. <laughs> We are at... Wait. Ow. Okay. Anything else? I think we're good. We're okay. good. We're having dinner at Meshugana. I'm on a boat. Like so many parks. Like everywhere you go, there's like a park or... A park? <laughs> 